Woohoo! We are live with Miss Raina Odell. Thank you, everybody, for popping on. As you know, welcome to What It Takes. My name is Brittany Adamson. I'm a senior manager of the coach development team for the West Region here. And here at Beachbody, we have an entire group of people dedicated to helping you reach your potential. If you are a diamond coach or above, please check out FAQ 7581 to learn more about how we can help you achieve your goals. So let's jump into our what it takes. As you know by now, it is a weekly mini series where we ask the same questions to elite coaches and they talk about what it takes to become an elite coach. Today, we are talking with superstar diamond coach, four time elite, two time elite top 10 and founder of Team Legacy Collective, Miss Raina Odell. Hi. Hello. Hi. So excited to have you here. So before we jump into all of these questions, will you please tell us a little bit about yourself? Yes, I am Raina Odell. I've been a coach for just over five years. I started in April of 2013. I am a mom of two. My kids are 10 and 12 now, two girls. Um, I am divorced. I live in Denver, Colorado. I, oh my gosh, what else? I have, I was diagnosed with severe ulcerative colitis. I have a permanent ileostomy, which I've gone through a huge transformation up and down and up and down and up and down in my business. So it's been kind of fun to share that and teach others how to share the goods and bads and all that. So anything else I should add? I don't know. No, that, that was awesome. No, you're great. So let's jump into Beachbody. How were you introduced to Beachbody? So I had just started my health and fitness journey probably six months prior to becoming a coach, I was online and was on the website, my fitness pal. And I was asking about Shakeology because I had seen a lot of people post about this magic shake. And I was like, that's what I need is this like magic shake. And so I reached out to the first person that was referred to me and said, Hey, you know, I want some free Shakeology samples. Can I get some samples? And she literally just asked me a few questions about myself and what I was doing and my routine and things like that. And then just mentioned coaching randomly. And I said, yes, and that was it. Well, that's <laughs> I was the easiest prospect in the entire world. <laughs> literally, but I yeah. love that. So once you signed up, can you describe what those early days looked like for you? Yes. So I, when I signed up, I was like, okay, you know, I, I joined with P90X and I was told that my health and fitness journey would be the most important aspect of coaching. So I dug into my challenge pack and it's funny, I spent $205 on my challenge pack. And so people complain now about like $140 challenge pack. And I'm like, ah, you can totally sell that. Um, so I joined in with a P90X challenge pack. Um, committed 110% to that program, did it every single day, no matter what, drink my Shakeology every single day. And in that, those first few days, I just kind of fell in love with the progress or the process. I was thrown into a challenge group. I was thrown into a 30 day coach training at that point. So I had these two groups and I remember waking up on the first day that the group started and she, my assignment was to like, kind of like make a short video and introduce yourself and what your goals were and things like that. And I remember like setting my alarm super early to wake up and I was in bed and I like made this video introducing myself, just super excited. But I immediately asked, you know, what do I have to do to be successful? What do I have to do to make this work? And she said, you have to rank advance and you have to hit success club. And I was like, okay, I'll do that. So I dug in, I messaged everyone I knew in my phone that had anything to do with health and fitness and begged them to sign up. <laughs> But this goes to our next question perfectly. So what do you feel are some key attributes or habits that you have that have contributed to your success? I would, this is going to be probably a super cliche answer that every coach on here doesn't want to hear, but it's consistency. I, from day one, dug into the business. I, one, was consistent with my workouts and my Shakeology, but two, even more so for the business side of things, I mean, I invited every single day. I invited new people. I followed up with people like clockwork. I added new people to my network. I was just always posting. I was always on social media. And I remember in the beginning getting a little bit of, you know, negativity from spouse and family and like you're on your phone again. But it was, I, I had to have this conversation with them saying, you know, hey, 
I'm going to do this thing and I'm going to be successful at it. And it's going to take a little bit of sacrifice. Um, but more than anything, I just think it was me showing up every single day, no matter what. As cliche as that is, it's the golden question or the golden answer. It really, truly is. So I love that you just reiterated that because the last how many weeks we've been doing this, that is the number one thing every top coach is saying. So yeah. thank you for, yeah. for saying that. Um, what advice would you have for a brand new coach who doesn't know where to start? What can they start doing, to, doing today to achieve long-term success? Show up be present on social media. I think mm -hmm. I preached to my team for the last five years, like through the good, the bad, the ugly. I mean, you guys, I was married when I first started and got divorced through this process. I was healthy when I started and got diagnosed with this disease during this process, like have hospitalizations through kid things and divorce, like every single day, no matter what I showed up. And I have people still reach out to this day saying, you know, how have you been so you know, positive. And so, you know, still here through all of this and Beachbody was my outlet. Like coaching was my escape from the good and the bad days. You know what I mean? So just be present and, and share it all. Like you, a lot of people I think are hesitant to share the bad parts of their life or the not so happy rainbow unicorn parts of their life. But I feel like it's going to allow them to just relate to more people they can ever imagine they're doing that. So for sure. And I feel like this next question goes right in line with that because, you know, the next question is, is what about the coach who is struggling or is thinking about giving up? What advice do you have for them? My, I don't even know. It's such a good question. Um, what do you have to lose? Mm -hmm. I think that's the biggest question. Like I tell people all the time, they're like, oh, I don't know if I could do the business side of things. Okay. Jump in on your health and fitness journey. Worst case scenario, you get healthy in this process but nine times out of 10, you're going to be inspiring people along the way and coaching. That's what coaching is, is just showing up every single day and inspiring people to take this job that, that you did. So, keep and going. you, and you said it so beautifully though, you said you share everything. So even if it is really bad, I mean, you're going to obviously relate. So 100%. yeah. And what, what, what do you have to lose? Right. You have right. so much to gain. <laughs> um, what is the best advice someone has given you regarding your business? I feel like my answers are going to be pretty much all the same. The best advice regarding my business, be consistent, show up every single day, post on social media. I would say follow-ups. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's like, if you're getting, if I'm asking, getting like detail, this is like a detailed question. I would say that's the part that a lot of coaches are super hesitant to do. They're like, I don't want to bug this person. I've already invited them. Like, do I really have to send them another met? Like, Yes. 90% of the people that I sign up come from my follow-ups. And I think that's a big part that a lot of coaches don't do. So for sure. Yeah. I love that you said that though. So follow <laughs> up on the invite. Yes. So that's amazing. So we flew through those and I, and we have a speed round now, so I feel like it's going to go a little bit faster, but do me a favor because obviously you have been in this business quite a long time. You've had so much great success, but will you, you know, when you answer this question, talk about where you're at now, but will you also relate it back to where you were when you first started? Yes. <laughs> Perfect. So on, yes, please. Um, on average, how much time do you spend working your business per day? When I started, um, I would say, okay, so it's so different now. Like when I started, my entire life was different. So I would wake up. I'm going to give you a long answer. Cause we have a lot of time. I feel like, uh, <laughs> wake up, get my kids around from school, like check into my challenge groups while they're like brushing their teeth and stuff like that. Um, I kind of just did pockets of time as a newer coach. So I would send my kids to school. I was at that time, my oldest was in half day. My youngest was in half day preschool. Um, so I literally had like three hours before I had to like pick them up. So I would do my workout and like maybe a few invites and things like that. But then I would get my kids and like crap would hit the fan. Like it was just family time at that point. So in the beginning of my business, I did a lot of little pockets, but I really mostly worked at night from like eight o'clock when I put the kids to bed until like midnight, sometimes later. Um, and I would just grab my laptop and sit on the couch next to my husband and work while he watched TV. And that was it. And I would have headphones in and I would listen to like all the Scotty Hobbs videos that I could and Melanie Mitchell all night long and just soak in all of it. So I would guess like probably four, at least four hours a day. Awesome. Is that a good, 
good estimate. Now, um, I do, I've learned to delegate some things, which was a very hard thing for me to do in the beginning. So the last year and a half, I've, I've had an assistant um, who helps a ton as far as that, you know, day to day and things like that. But I would say solid, probably three to four hours a day is what I work now also. Okay. So kind of similar across the board. Yeah. Just different, like a different layout and I'm doing different things now. Like I'm doing more mentoring and things like that, where my assistant now can handle some of the conversations and things like that. So yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. (laughs) So what is your average SC each month? Now it is probably average, I would say 60 to 70. Okay. Yeah. Um, in the beginning, I'm going to be honest and like my very first month I signed up on April 12th of 2013, my first month I hit SC 12 and then there, I don't think there's ever been a month since that I hit less than 20 just because, and that's kind of high for a newer coach, mm-hmm. but I was also in that mindset. That she was like, okay, what I have to do to be successful, you have to hit success club. And I'm like, oh shit, I better hit success club. So I didn't mean to cuss either. I don't know. <laughs> like, Oh, poo, I need it. So I made it a goal to hit that minimum every single month. So let me go one layer deeper on this just because, I mean, because normally you don't see, you know, coming in off the gates, like SC 12 and above, that's incredible. So what do you teach your coaches to get that success right away? I mean, I feel like it depends on what that coach is motivated by. And this is a huge factor. I think like if I sign someone who's like, really truly just in it to help people and they're not motivated by income or by tank tops or anything like that, then it's a little bit harder. But those people that jump in that see what we're posting about and see, you know, a paid for a cart of groceries with my beach, but like the people that want that, I say success club a hundred percent. So for me, it's like, okay, you have to get your spouse on board. You need to go through your phone. I, I do the little spiel like I did in this call where I'm like, I went through everybody on my phone and you have to message everybody. Like, they were into paleo or running or like walked a little bit. Like I messaged them like every single person I could. And I feel like after that first month, after planting all of those seeds, it's just kind of a snowball effect where, you know, people are, if if you are consistent, like you being consistent in your health and fitness journey is it it won't work if you're not, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, but it's overcoming that fear of just talking to your contacts, your warm contacts. putting those blinders on and just like going, like just copy paste, just invite them. Like, well, what's the worst that's going to happen? They're going to say no. And you're like, all right, see you next month when I follow up with you, you know? <laughs> Thank you for letting me go deeper on that. I just love, yeah. love that. Okay. So what percentage of time do you focus on your own business versus your team? I, it's okay. It's hard because of, because of my assistant, like if I were doing all of the work, I would still be probably 75% on my own business. So my focus every single month, like June 1st comes around, I'm like, all right, I'm going to hit success. club. like, it's not, it's still mentoring, but I have to walk the walk. I have to show up every single day. If I'm not hitting high success club numbers, how am I supposed to teach my team to do that? How am I supposed to mentor them to do the exact same thing? Cause this business is about duplication. So for me, I'm still like 75, 80% focused on my business. And then what is that? 15, 20, 30, 40% on my team and mentoring them. Okay. You just heard that from one of the top coaches. So (laughs) keep going. I love this. I was going to say in the beginning, it was, I mean, it was, everything was pretty like 90% my business just because I had to get up and going. But I remember, you know, when I hit Emerald rank and let my coach Leslie was like, okay, now we got to diamond. And I'm like, oh, like shit, what do I need for diamond? And, you know, I need to find the working coaches now and start to build up those people. And so I would dig into challenge groups and do a little bit deeper mentoring as far as that goes, but it's always been 75, 80% my business for sure. Love, love, love that. Thank you. So last hard question. Okay. This is even hard. This is your business, but okay. how many coaches do you enroll each month? Uh, so I do bring on working coaches and I do bring on people for the discount as well. So if I'm just classifying it all as just a coach as a coach as a coach, I would say if I got 70 successful points, I would say 60 of those points would be from coaches. So 
I don't know, I would say 20 to 30 a month is what I usually do. And out of those 20 to 30, how many are actively working? Out of the 20 to 30, I would say at least half are actively working. Okay. Awesome. So (laughs) what did it look like at the very beginning? In the beginning, I it was not that much. I remember I remember doing a call with one of the people with corporate, um, and it was the year that I wanted to push for top ten. But I had just been a coach for like a year, like hadn't been a coach for super long. And I was like, okay, I'm going to go for top ten. Like I'm going to do this. And so we sat down. I went through my numbers, and I was recruiting. I don't know. I would guess like five coaches a month ish, like three to five at that point, majority of my successful points came from customers at that point. Um, and I remember him saying to me, okay, you're going to have to like, like 15 coaches a month. And I'm like, Oh my God, like 15, how am I going to do 15 coaches a month? And so I just sat down and I was like, okay, what's missed? Like, what do I have to do to get there? And it was talking to more people is all it was. And I shifted that and fixed it. And here I am. So okay. yeah, every month since then. <laughs> You're amazing. I love it, Raina. Well, you are through all of those questions. Now we have a random question from the hat. I feel like you need a drum roll. I know, right? Yeah. It's a long oh, one. I don't know. That one's kind of weird. <laughs> ah, okay, we're doing this one. Okay. What is the strangest family tradition in your family? Ugh, strangest family tradition. Mm, I don't know if I have. I, was, I don't. I don't have like the typical, like, oh shit. I don't even know. <laughs> You're good. Number two. Hold on. Yeah, I'm like, that's, <laughs> nope, that's not a good one. <laughs> Where were you when you had your first kiss? That's a good one. Oh, oh. my first kiss was, is it bad that I don't even remember? <laughs> I would say. <laughs> I graduated with like 16 people. So I'm pretty sure like the five guys in my class, I kissed all of them. So I would say probably, I grew up in a really small town and we went like back roading a lot and drank a lot of beer. So it was probably back in the woods somewhere with a beer in my hand, like a Coors Light or a Natty Light or something. Okay. <laughs> I'm just guessing, but it's probably pretty accurate. Okay. I have to ask, cause we still have a little bit of time. Um, where did you grow up where you only had 16 people in your class? I mean, it's so sad. I am from a super small town in Missouri. Okay. You're like, yep, that explains. Yeah. Missouri. <laughs> okay. it's, like, it's like three hours South of Kansas city. <laughs> okay. Awesome. I just had to ask that question. Yeah, I know. So, <laughs> so to kind of wrap this, what it takes up. Thanks for the fun. That was great. Um, is really, I mean, as you're starting to see, you know, especially with Raina, I mean, the consistency, the showing up every single day, the, when it gets hard, leaning in and making it happen and, and getting over your fear of inviting, especially your warm market. But is there anything else, Raina, that you would just like to reiterate to these 90,000 plus coaches that are at the beginning stages of their business that are really trying to grasp what to do from here? Like, what would you say to them? I would say make a post introduce yourself. If you haven't done that yet, share what you're doing. Post every single day. I hear a lot of people say, oh, my life isn't as exciting as yours. And I'm like, my friends, like most of the coaches that know me that are listening to this will say that I have one of the most boring lives in the entire, I'm like super boring person. I just, what I do, I make it look exciting. I work out every single day. I drink my Shakeology every single day. I talk about my dog. I talk about my kids. I talk about just my life. And I feel like that is what allows me to relate to so many people and has helped me build the success that I have. So share what you're doing and don't hold back from it. Beautifully said. We end there. Thank you so much, Miss Raina Gorgeous Odell. Thank Thank you, Beachbody Coaches.